keeps waiting on that throne to get to his house. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's all about honor, right? Another anointed vessel is coming in Sunday. Amen. I, I honor him. He can deliver what God gives to him. Amen. Just lift up your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. I just praise you for your presence, Lord. I'm asking tonight that your glory come down in this place. Lord, let your fire resonate in this place. Father, we're hungry for you. We're hungry for you. We're hungry for your throne. Lord, let it come in our midst and would you enthrone our praise tonight. Lord, we just give you praise. We worship you. 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 Sing this. Holy Spirit, flow.
Tongues literally almost, Lord woke me up this morning almost every minute of the day. Just it's just been on me today. I just I just praise you, Lord. I just praise you. Lift your hands to him and worship him. We just worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you. such a vast subject. Lord, help me do it justice. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. This is God's throne. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to him again. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. 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 
still there right now. We're going to command it to dissolve in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Dissolve. 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 Lift your hands and give the Lord praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, I'm not you. 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 Perisha pahom pa de dirishit kura bron se tash kiri bron so fahande. For I say unto thee, saith the Lord, these are the days where my men and women will rise up in authority, and they will drive sickness out of their camps. Yes. Yeah. Lift your hands and give the Lord Somebody told me that the lady that couldn't hardly walk. Uh, Sister Marielis. What's her name? Marielis. Did she not? She's walking now. Uh, the night she was here, she was so feeble. Yes. And she was waiting for heart test. Yes. Uh, she come back and she grabbed a hold of her and she said, "The Lord has touched me." When she come to church Sunday, she come bouncing in there. Done got her hair did, and everything. Give the Lord a shout! Yeah. She went to the heart doctor. They gave her a good report. Hey Amen. Right. Say that one more time, little bit. People can hear you. Just say. Uh, when she went to the heart doctor, uh, she was expected uh, open heart surgery. When she, was here. when she was here, she came in, and if you saw her, she looked like a uh, a feeble lady that would be elderly aged. And that night when she went up for prayer, she knew the Lord had touched her. And so she came back with the report. She came walking in there, not on her cane, with no help in our church Sunday. And she said, I've been touched by the mighty hand of God. And she's still doing that. And when she went for her test, heart test, they gave her a good report. Oh, no yes. heart yes. Hallelujah. No one did heart surgery. That's a creative miracle. This is again. Open heart surgery means you've got some major blockages. Yeah. Give him a shout of yeah. I said give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. All right. I feel like we can get into the word now. Hallelujah. Say God's throne. God's throne. Part seven. Part seven. And I'm sharing some things about it in here in Milano that I haven't shared some more in depth because God's downloaded some things in me today. Amen. When I was just praying in the Spirit, shut in for hours in, in, in our house. Just a real quick review. And if you weren't here for some of this, then I encourage you to get the CDs. God downloaded this revelation to me straight from heaven. God shut me up for about 14 years out in the country, out in a small place, and He downloaded revelation knowledge to me and has released me as a prophet to the nations. And one of the revelations He gave me was His throne. That it moves. And that shook me out. But... But you know, we've gone verse by verse, chapter. We can give you chapter and verse for everything. Don't take anything unless you see it in the Word. Yes. Psalm 103, 19 says, God's established His throne in the heavens. The Shemaim is the Hebrew word. There's three, first, second, and third. It moves throughout. One scripture says, heaven is my throne. All of it. We looked at... I believe that God's throne is so big that He had to give three different men part of it. He gave Ezekiel the bottom view. He gave Isaiah the top view. He gave John the panoramic view. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 1, he saw visions of God. And coming down out of heaven was a whirlwind. And out of the whirlwind came the four living creatures. Who later in chapters 9 and 10, this is a very quick review. We've taught on this in depth. 
He saw the four living creatures who later were cherubim. Each of them had one wheel. Daniel chapter 7 talks about the Ancient of Days, the great white throne judgment, and the court was in session, and that the Ancient of Days sat on His throne, but that the wheels of His throne were fire. Amen. Amen. Each of those cherubim have one of those wheels. And Ezekiel's looking up, right? And then he sees a firmament over the head of the cherubim. And above the firmament is a throne. And on the throne is a semblance of a man. That's God the Father. I'll tell you, when you see the Father, God told me this year He's going to start revealing revelation knowledge of who the Father is. Oh! It's going to shock a lot of people. Because you're going to look a lot like Him. Because He made you in His image. When He made His man and He breathed into His nostrils, the Hebrew word is the neshama. The spirit man. That wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was the spirit man into that dead corpse. And then, boom, man became a living soul. He was spirit, soul, and body. That's why James says the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. So Ezekiel saw the bottom view. Isaiah saw the top view. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And His train filled the temple. Above it, above the throne, stood cherubims. They weren't flying at that point. They were standing. There's a place to stand above it. We looked at heaven. Heaven is not a square. It's 1,500 cubicle miles. It's as high as it is wide. And in our new bodies, we could zoom up to the 800 miles zone and say, let's fellowship. Uh, Amen. 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 Glory to God. God's throne is multidimensional. The living creatures in Revelation 4 cannot be the same that Ezekiel saw. Because the ones that Ezekiel saw had four wings and four faces, and each of them had a wheel. The four living creatures in Revelation each had a different face, no wheel, and six wings. And the seraphims that stand above the throne have six wings and no wheels. And they each have specific assignments. So this is just a real, real quick review. Amen. And we've dealt with think That's a pretty quick review. Amen. Because we've dealt with this in depth. Scripture, Scripture. We know that God rides cherubs. We've given Scripture on that. There are times He'll get on a cherub and ride it. Look, I mean, just turn real quick. And I saw him riding, coming down for me in a vision. And I'll never be the same. He, this, is a, this is in 2 Samuel 22. It's also in Psalm 18. David was in the midst of a great trial. He cried out to the Lord. Verse 6 says in Psalm 18, In my distress I called upon the Lord. I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from His temple. And my cry came before Him. Even to His ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills also quaked and were shaken. Because he was angry. God gets angry when you cry out when you're in trouble. I said he gets angry. The earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils. He's got nostrils. And devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens. He doesn't stay there 24-7. You see, we're really not hearing a lot of word preaching, especially on Christian TV. When I started listening to the pure word in the year 2005, and then I started sleeping in the word, years of 24-7, the word, I just have a pod in one ear. I've got it right here. You see something in my pocket? That's what it is. Changed my life forever because I realized how little word, especially the American church, is hearing you hear a little verse here and there picked out that you raise a good offering or preach preaches good. Jesus started telling me, that's not what I preach, son. Go read the sermon. Amen. Amen. Changed my life forever. 
Amen. He started showing me things in this word that I have never heard. Yeah. Amen. Giving a revelation on it. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of them. Some of you heard me tell the story when I was, we were in the middle of one of our greatest trials. Uh, my wife Cindy and I, my youngest son Joshua, he was asleep in the big van driving. We were driving in for a meeting. And, uh, and, uh, and suddenly the heaven was open and I saw the father riding a cherub, busting out laughing. And he quotes this verse to me. And I, I don't know, I'm not even, I said, I, I, he said, I'm out the cherub. Well, he quoted it in King James because that's what I had in me at the time. I'm out the chair. And, it's, and, and Cindy's having to grab the steering wheel because I'm trying to get out of a moving van taking my seatbelt off because I want to get to the Father. I just saw him. He's coming down. See, that don't make sense of what I've heard preach most of my life. I, I cut my teeth in full gospel. God's just sitting on the throne. Thousands of years just sitting there, sitting there. He's just sitting there. He's sitting there. He's sitting there, sitting there. No, he's not. Yeah. Yeah, I've showed, we've looked at all kinds of scripture to prove that he's not. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And this is just one of them. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. He bowed the heavens also and came down. If he came down for David, Amen. he'll come down for you. Amen. I said, if he came down for David, he'll come down for you. Amen. Uh, with darkness under his feet, and he rode upon a cherub and flew. What cherub? One of those four that have the wheels of the throne. Yeah. Well, all right. That's a pretty good review in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Now we we were we looked in depth beneath the throne. We've looked in depth above the throne. And we've looked sort of in depth around the throne. And, and the 24 elders and everything. And the seven fires that are in front of the throne. The sevenfold Holy Spirit. And each of those flames is constantly burning. Constantly burning. And what the Lord dealt with last session is that either as a Christian, we're talking about Christians now, Either we can experience the fire of God now and let Him burn up anything in our life that's not of Him. Yeah. Or when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, yeah. we'll cross those fires and any work that's not of Him will be burned up. I choose to let it burn now. How about you? Amen. I said, I choose to let it burn now. Yeah. Any, um, any selfish, any... Yeah. Thing of the flesh and Daryl McManus, God, burn it out, burn it out, burn it out. I want, I don't want any wood, I don't want any hay, I don't want any stubble. And so now we're to the point of identifying those seven fires, and God says that, that He's going to release them. But and while I was praying today, the Lord said. Because I was wondering, Lord, when are we going to deal with the different types of praise? Yeah. And the Lord said, you got to do that first. Because the very first fire, and let's just look at the fires real quick. Those seven, those, those seven flames, just, just turn if you would. Revelation chapter 1. The end of verse 4 says, well, let me just read the, the, the fourth verse. John to the seven assemblies, churches that are in Asia, may grace, God's unmerited favor, be granted to you in spiritual peace, the peace of Christ's kingdom, from Him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits, the sevenfold Holy Spirit, before His throne. Then if you'll skip to the fourth chapter. In the fifth verse, it says, Out from the throne came come flashes of lightning, and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. 
The Amplified says the sevenfold Holy Spirit. Last session we dealt with, there's the fire of God. It's just on my, my ears right now. He's not finished moving by fire tonight. Last night we dealt with the menorah. Why did God give such specific instructions for that sevenfold candlestick? It had to be hammered out of one piece of gold because there's only one Holy Spirit, but He has seven flames. Seven flames. Say seven flames. Seven flames. Those seven flames are identified in Isaiah chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. This is prophecy of Jesus. And a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That's the first flame. Say the Spirit of the Lord. Spirit Number two, the Spirit of Wisdom. Say the Spirit of Wisdom. Spirit Number three, Spirit of Understanding. Spirit of understanding. Number four, Spirit of Counsel. Spirit of Number five, the, the Spirit of Strength. Spirit of strength. Number six, the spirit of knowledge. Spirit and number seven, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Fear, fear and he Lord. will delight in the fear of the yeah. Lord. And I already know it. Whenever we get to that one, there's going to be such a holy awe and reverence manifest in this place. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Irreverence will go out in every dimension. Because it's going to come by fire. His fire. Say his fire. His fire. Now, so when we get in, the very first one is connected with one of these. Now, God added, I used to have eight Hebrew words for praise, but the Lord added a ninth today. And so we want to, I want to just quickly look at these. Say, Hebrew words for praise. That's why I don't I don't tell people worship God in your own way. I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. Because knowing what I know now, then I'd be disobedient. Because every Hebrew word for praise, that's why I mean you read the Psalms, praise the Lord, praise Him on the, the, the symbol, praise Him. Every word is different. Every Hebrew word means a specific thing. So let's just quickly look at them. Number one is the Hebrew word yada. Say yada. It's spelled Y A D A H. Yada means to open and extend your hands to God. You cannot yada without doing this. Yeah. Amen. 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 people say, "Well, I don't want to do that." Well, then you, you then you can't obey the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's yada. Hallelujah. I I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. And we're going to hit these kind of briefly. I'll give you the references. Yadah is used in Psalm 54, verses 1 through 7. The word praise in that passage is Yadah. Say Yadah. The second Hebrew word is Todah. Say Todah. Spelled T O W D A H, but pronounced Todah. It's, it means to extend the hands with thanksgiving or gratitude. Say gratitude. That's what's used in Psalm 100. When we enter His gates with Todah. Hallelujah. Todah. I, I, I'm probably going to shock some people uh, this um, Thanksgiving holiday. I don't know where we'll be, but I'm going to... Because I'm going to do this instead of this. Because that's you can't you can't give him that without this. That's what it means. You can't do it. When you know this, you got to do that. Would you do that right now? How many of you are grateful for what he's, he's moved and he's blessed you? Lord, I just praise you. I told all you. I told all you. I told all you tonight. Boy, I just feel it. the fire of the Holy Ghost here. Oh, I give you praise. You see, God likes this. But He likes it when you do it tomorrow morning. When nobody's looking. When no one else sees but just you and Him. Oh, that's when He really likes it. 
Hallelujah. You lift your hands to him again. Lord, I give you praise. The next one is the Shabak. S-H-A-B-A-C-H, but it's pronounced Shabak. It's used in Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3. Shabak means to address in a loud tone. Well, just let's just do a glory to God in a loud tone. Hallelujah. One, two, three. Glory to God. There are times when God, when you when you study the original, when God says to go do go up here and praise me, it was a specific word. And most most American Christians, they just, I praise you, I praise you, I praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So every one of them is different. That's why to praise Him specifically will give you a specific result. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give Him praise again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And, and of course, I, lo I love Psalm 63. We'll just let's turn there real quick. That's one of my favorites. But hey, more and more, I'm just getting more and more favorites because the Word is so rich. The Word is so rich. Yes. Oh God, you're my God. Early or earnestly will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness, that's the Hebrew word hesed, is better than life. My lips shall shabak you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Address in a loud tone. Do you see that? Alright, let's go on. Because all of these are powerful words, but that's not where we're headed tonight. Number four is Barak. B A R A K and it's pronounced B A W, second syllable R A K with the accent on the second one. So say Barak. Barak means to. It means two things. It means to kneel and it also means to bless. In Psalm 103, David was commanding his soul to bless the Lord. Your mind, will, and emotions is not going to yeah. feel like blessing him. That's why you want. You got to learn to command it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He was commanding. Yeah. At that time, David didn't feel like doing it. I got, he didn't feel like it. That's why he was commanding his soul. I bless you, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. And uh, bless your holy name. I bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and I forget not all your benefits. Who forgives all my iniquities. Who heals all my diseases. Who redeems my life from destruction. On and on and on. And then... Look at Psalm 95 and verse 6. If you would just turn there real quick. Here it means to kneel. Verse 6 says, Oh, come and let us worship. That's the ninth word that I've added. Shekah. Say Shekah. Shekah. I'll just demonstrate what you call it. This is what I do in my own office. This is my favorite position for the Lord with the Lord. Amen. Oh, Amen. I got anointed worship going out. And then, then then I'll just go like this. I normally don't do this while I'm preaching. But that's what it means. That's what Shaka means. It means to stretch out, prostrate before the Lord. It also means to fall down before Him. It means, yes, I'll spell it. S-H-A-C-H-A-H. S-H-A-C-H-A-H. It means to bow down, to prostrate oneself. Uh, it means to crouch. It means to fall down. It means to humbly beseech. It means to reverence. It means to worship. So we've got two powerful words in this one scripture. Two powerful words. Oh, come and let us shaka and bow down. And let us kneel. The word kneel is Barak. Hallelujah. Amen. Before the Lord. 
our maker. Oh, I just worship you. I just honor you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I praise you. Amen. Another powerful word. But let's keep going. The next one is Zamar. Z-A-M-A-R. And it's pronounced Zamar. It means to touch the strings. Mom, would you just touch those strings? Give me some strings. Elevate them, would you, volume? Why? There are times God will not move without the right strings. Because He's, he's calling from heaven, He's calling for Zamar. Amen. Hallelujah, we worship you. Magnify your holy name. Oh, we just lift our voice to you and we let the strings resound before you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, so how does the kingdom work? Kingdom, in a kingdom, you don't vote. It's not a democracy, it's a kingdom. The king orders. If the kings, if we can access what's happening in heaven on the earth, then whatever is happening in heaven has a right to come to earth. Amen. That's why when we pray your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth as. That's the key. We've got to hear and we've got to see. We've got to know what's happening there. Amen. So Zamar, you can't Zamar the Lord without strings. And uh, that's in Psalm 108, verses 1 and 2. The word zamar is used. It means uh, to touch the strings on various parts of a musical instrument. To play upon an instrument. It, it, it means this. This is unusual. You see, most people who sing, if they go looking for an accompaniment track, you're buying a track to accompany what you're wanting to say. But that's not what Zamar means. Zamar means to make music that is accompanied by the voice. In other words, Zamar means for an anointed musician to, through prayer and worship, to get a hold of something that's heaven is playing. Bring it to earth. And then God will give a voice to accompany the music. Just the opposite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how prophetic singing takes place. Amen. Through Zamar. Alright. We're just barely hitting these because we've got to get to Tehillah. Then number six is the Halal. H-A-L-A-L. It means to be a fanatic. To rave, to rant, to be clamorously foolish for the Lord. And these these uh, scriptures are used in Psalm twenty two twenty two, Psalm thirty four two. Uh, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Psalm forty four verse eight. So, just would you just stand up for a moment? Because you really can't allow sitting down. If that's where that's where the word hallelujah comes from. It's the Hebrew word halal to Yah. Yah is the Hebrew for God. And so if you're now we're going to halal shortly, but if you're louder at a ball game, you're not allowing. If you've ever yelled louder for a pigskin or a baseball or a, or a basketball, you're not allowing. You've got to be as the most radical fanatic about God than you ever have. And there, there are times over and over in Scripture, God says, allow me. That's what David was doing when his wife Michael made fun of him. And God cursed her and shut her womb. If you're ashamed about God, then don't expect Him to be excited about you. Amen. Yeah. I said, if you're ashamed about God, then don't expect Him to be excited about you. 
So I'm going to count one, two, three, and we're going to do it to hallelujah because that's the root of it. Yeah. And really, ready? One, two, three. Glory to God. Lord, we give you praise. Then the then the, the seventh one is Te Elah, but we're going to skip it just briefly to hit the the next one, which is the Ruah. And uh, Ruah, R-U-W-A, but it's pronounced Ruah. It means to mar by breaking. It means to split the ear with sound. And in Joshua 6.16, 6, when God said to march around the walls for seven days and seven times on the seventh day, the word He said to shout was ruah. If they did not split the ear with sound, the walls would not have come down because that's what God ordered. Amen. The moment they hit a ruah, and God said, I accept it. The walls came down. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now we're not going to ruah tonight. We got pretty loud on just a little loud. But people that complain about loud sounding symbols, and we don't even have those here tonight. And I, I mean, don't know what they're going to do in heaven. Because God likes it. Lift your hands and give Him praise. Yeah. 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 Give Him praise. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now just for a few moments. I'm running out of room here. I'm a teacher. And so sometimes I need extra space. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. You're glorious. You're glorious. This last word we're going to deal with is spelled T E H I L L A H. But it's pronounced, it's not pronounced Tehillah. It's pronounced Tehillah. Say Tehillah. The accent is on the last syllable. Spell that one more time. T E H I L L A H. Tehillah. Tehillah is when you get beyond praising the Lord and you begin to access His praise. Yeah. Yeah. Tehillah is when you can jumpstart a move of God with a halal. You, you, you may wake up in the morning and say, I don't feel you, God. Start halaling. For about ten minutes, and you'll find where God, where things weren't moving, God will tell them to halal. Yeah. They halaled even when God said said to send the singers first. Yeah. But God didn't send ambushments until they got to Tehillah. Yeah. Why? Because it's the only kind of praise. That he's obligated to enthrone. Where is the highest level of authority in, the, in his kingdom? Throne. We've already seen that it moves throughout the heavens. I've seen a vision of that too in intense worship. Where is it moving? It's looking for somebody who's ten alive. Is looking for a group that will get into Tehillah so that that throne can enthrone that level of praise. When that happens, miracles will take place. I say when that happens because Psalm 103 says God's established His throne in the heavens. His kingdom rules over what? All. Is cancer in all? Yes. Tumors in all? Yes. Kidney problems in all? Yes. Divorce, is that included in all? Yes. Financial problems, is that included yes. in all? Yes. Hallelujah. 
Amen. All. Hallelujah. All. Say all. All. So, in Psalm 22, verse 3, says, But you are holy. Would you just say that? God, you're holy. God, you're holy. Enthroned, or who inhabitus, depending on your translation. But enthroned is the correct translation. The, the Hebrew word is yashab. Y-A-S-H-A-B. You are holy. You who are yashab in the Tehillah of Israel. In other words, you are holy, you who are enthroned in the Tehillah praise. Hallelujah. There is no scripture that he will enthrone the Todah or the Yadah or the Shabbat or the Barak. There's only one type of praise that he will inhabit or he will enthrone. And that is the Tehillah. That's when we move from blessing you, Lord, I bless you until suddenly you have accessed his praise. Yes. yes. <coughs> That's what happens with this brother. Amen. I've seen people yell through the years. I mean, I've been on several continents, ministered in all kinds of venues. Yeah. And we have 682 churches in India that we're responsible for and an orphanage and just and you see people yell and you know it's flesh. Oh, but when this brother's praising, you know it's coming from the depths. It's coming from the depths of the Lord. That's why he saw a vision. We've had so many people saying vision. He saw the Lord here the other service, right? Somewhere around here. Why? Because God will enthrone that. Yeah. I said He will enthrone that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Would you just say, Lord, enthrone it tonight. Lord, it tonight. Let's look at, I'm going to give you several verses where Tehillah is used. First, Deuteronomy chapter 10. Verses 20 and 21. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve Him. And to Him you shall hold fast and take oaths, oaths in His name. He is your Tehillah. <laughs> Say, you are my Tehillah. You are my Tehillah. See, you just casual reading it. You, you, it'll just say, he is, my, he is my praise. No, not any praise. He is your Tehillah. Say, you are my Tehillah. You are my Tehillah. He is your God and who has done for you these great and awesome things which our eyes have seen. You see, every time, look at all the scriptures we get into where God is doing a miracle. Tehillah is directly related to miracles. If we can get out of program praise, we got to have some structure because people come in, they've been fighting with their spouse. People come in with all kinds of stuff that they've come out of. And so it's alright to have some structure. We need it to focus on the Lord. But at some point, what God wants every time, every time, every time we meet is to get out of that in a tail off. And when we do, His throne will come in on top of that praise. And when his throne comes in, that's when growth disappears. That's when cancer dies. That's when people run to the altar, exactly. I'm believing for the anointing that worked through Charles Finney. I'm just letting you know. The anointing God used in him, anybody that was lost, God knocked him out of the pew. You didn't even have to have altar. Everybody knew. 
Three or four hundred be knocked out at a time. I'm believing for that. I mean, in America, well, I don't even know if I'm afraid to come to the front. Well, in India, where we go, we got over 61,000 members in our churches in India. To be a Christian, they've got to march through the village denouncing Hinduism, change their government papers, and denouncing I'm no longer a Hindu, I am now a Christian, and be water baptized and probably lose their job. Where is that in this country? Amen. Yeah, it, I, it's probably coming. Because the pulpit has failed in this country. We can't pray in tongues no more. We've got to put them in a, in a room somewhere. We can't cast out demons anymore. Jesus wouldn't be allowed in most churches in this nation. Amen. It's the truth. I'm preaching the truth. John the Baptist had last time visitors. Read it. They showed up. He said, you brood of vipers. Who told you about these things? Jesus emptied the house in John chapter 6. Which crowd did He empty? The ones He just broke bread and fed the multitude. Then He preached so hard. Read the entire 6th chapter of John. It will shock you. You'll see Jesus working a miracle, feeding the multitude. Then He preached a message. He left and went somewhere else and they had to track Him down. Found Him. And then He preached. And then He preached harder. They got offended. Then He preached harder. They got more offended. Then He preached so hard that they all left except the twelve. And He turned to them and said, Do you want to go too? They said, where can we go? You have the words of life. Lift your hands and give the word of life. Where else can we go? You have the words of life. Hallelujah. Then quickly look at Deuteronomy 26, 19. Well, actually, 18 and 19. Also today, the Lord has proclaimed you to be His special people, just as He promised you that you should keep all His commandments and that He will set you high above all nations which He has made. In Tehillah, it is God's will that He set you in Tehillah praise. I believe that there's an anointing here tonight that will set people who are hungry into Tehillah grass. The first fire, which I, we won't get to it tonight, probably tomorrow night, the first fire, one of the things that the first fire before the throne will do, and I'll give you chapter and verse for it, it's in Isaiah 61, I won't turn there right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard for years, but on the garment of praise for the Spirit of yes. That's faith. It's mantle of ten and long. Do you see how little word we've heard? Oh, with an icy jumpy up song. No, that's not even what he was saying. That's one of those fires, the Spirit of the Lord. We'll release a mantle. That you can wear. Yep. Where his throne will inhabit you and your house. Lift your head to give him the praise. That's for tomorrow. But I'm going to give you some more scriptural tale on. We're fixing the clothes. Because we, there ain't no way. We, 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 this is about time to wrap this up. There's only so much you can handle. Yeah. 
Yeah. At any given time. Amen. Amen. I've been in hours and hours before you. But you just get bogged down. What did you say? Just can't contain. That's right. And we're containers. Say I'm a container. Say I want to keep what I got. All right. Now look at this. Turn to Second Chronicles chapter twenty. You see, this this completely changed this whole story for me. I read it. I heard it preached. It preaches good. You know, just because something preaches good even doesn't mean that it is true. Amen. If it's not here, are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. We got to have chapter and verse for it to be true. Now, what was the word of the Lord to Jehoshaphat when the enemy was arrayed against them? Look at Second Chronicles. What did I tell you? Chapter twenty, verse. Let's let's back up to verse eighteen. Start reading. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping Him, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the, Co of the Korathites stood up. There's praise again. There's that word praise, but which one is it? See, that's the thing. God wanted halal there. So they had to get up and hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, just do the radical thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. God likes it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Try it. You'll like it. Amen. Amen. God wanted the halal there. And he and they got it. Listen. And stood up to halal the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Oh, I mean, we don't even know how long it went on. God still did not send ambushments against him. Thousands out there right against him. What's God getting? He's getting them. He he's wants them to get somewhere so that he can move. You see, halal will get you somewhere. But it's not at the place where God will move yet. The Scripture says draw near to God. The Lowland will get you drawing near to Him. And then, at a certain point, then He's going to start coming. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And somebody said, I'm waiting for God to show up in my house. He's waiting for you. <laughs> to move Amen. towards His. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one with the issue of blood would have died unless she started yeah. moving. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, preach. Amen. It's true, brother. Amen. Amen. Yes. My brother ministered back there. It's true. Hallelujah. She would have died. Uh -huh. yeah. And it would not have been God's will. Amen. Then somebody could have preached, well, we know that all things work together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we've already preached on that, didn't we? Yeah. There's a verse 26 and a verse 27 before the 28th. Yeah. And if you do verse 26 and you do verse 27, which means pray in tongues and allow Him to help your infirmities and pray in the perfect will of God out in your life, then yes, let come what may and God will work it together for you good. Yeah. But just to pull 28 out? Why? There was a 26 and 27 before it. <laughs> Amen. We preached on it. Yeah. Now, he stood up to halal the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Yeah. Alright, verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went up into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe His prophets. Can you, can you, uh, uh, and you shall prosper. There's been some strong things spoken by a number of prophets, me included. Here's a word. God says, believe it. And you'll prosper. Amen. Say, I believe it. Therefore, I'll prosper. 
Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. And who should halal. Here it is again. There were specific halalers. Probably those that were the most radical. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, I'm just imagine the most radical. Man, they're good halalers. God wants to halal. We're going to appoint you as the halalers. <laughs> Amen. God's just great to hang around, isn't he? And, and so, and who should halal the beauty of holiness? And they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord. What, what word was this? Yadah. Yadah, Yadah to you, Almighty God. Yadah, Adonai. Yadah, Yadah, Yadah. I give you praise, thanksgiving, and gratitude. You're such a good God. He still didn't send the ambushment. They were Yadah and praised the Lord for His mercy endures forever. Yeah. But verse 22, Now when they began to sing and to tell the lie. <laughs> when they got out of their praising Him, and suddenly they accessed His praise. I said suddenly they began to access yeah. the praise of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 22 verse 3 began to manifest and God enthroned it. And one of that word Yeshab. Hmm. Oh, it, just, just hold your place. We're fixing to close, but I've got to just connect this. The Lord wants me to connect this. Not, not, not what I need to do, what He wants. And so hold your place there and go to Psalm 22, 3. You didn't forget about that, did you? Psalm 22, 3 says, But you are holy, enthroned, or you, you who are yashabed in the Tehillah. What does yashab mean? It means to enthrone. It means to sit down. God will enthrone that kind of praise. He will sit down in the middle of it. Yeah. He will sit down as judge in the middle of it. If you've been dealing with a situation, God will judge it for you. If you'll get into the law, God will judge it. It means to sit down in ambush. Ambush. Now back to 2 Chronicles. Now when they began to sing in the Tehillah, the Lord said, Ambush. Ambushes. Or ambushments. Why? Now we're back in 2 Chronicles 20, 22. Now when they began to sing in the Tehillah, when they began to get away from their efforts to praise and to access His praise, that the Lord sent ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And this is the word of the Lord tonight to every person here. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what the doctor's report was. I don't care who it is that's arrayed against your ministry. You can't serve God and not have enemies. This is the word of the Lord tonight. If you will push past the Yudah, if you will push past the Todah, if you will push past being radically praising Him, the Halal and the Shabbat, in the Zabar. And one of these scriptures, I guess we'll get to it. I got a list of them on Tehillah. Maybe tomorrow night. One of them is, is that you must wait for it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's one of the scriptures. But I got a whole list of them. I ain't got time to deal with it. Maybe tomorrow night. But I'll just give you a paraphrase. I waited for the Lord on high. Yeah, you go on down there. What's he waiting for? 
the words to him. His. 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 Then it starts saying His praise. Not my praise. His to the Lord. I'm waiting. What are we waiting? Lord, we're worshiping You. We're praising You. We're doing what we know to do. We're lifting our hands. We're sounding the alarm. We're sounding the shofar. But God, what we're waiting for is for Your praise to arrive. Yeah. And when You tell Him, arrive, Your throne will come down. And when it comes down, kingdom authority will drive out sickness and disease and demons. Yeah. And poverty and lack. Yeah. Yeah. And the enemies that have been arrayed against you, the Lord will send the ambush. It's not you. It's you. The Lord will send it. And I'm ready to pray that happens, like right now, then you're not having to fight. When that happens, you're not having to push. The push was to get into His rim. Once it arrives, let it take over. Let it take over. Let it take over. You don't have to accept that report, Brother Don. That's right. And what's trying to come at your body. When you push into his realm, the kingdom will rule over your body. Yeah. The kingdom itself will rule over what? All. I said all. all. I said all. I said all. I don't care what the diagnosis. My mom is 76 years old. She was in a meeting that was supposed to be Holy Ghost anointed. I will not call any names. Packed full of people. She's the only person that got hurt in the meeting. Raise your arm, Mom. They had to put plastic elbow in here and plates. Raise your, do everything that they said, the doctor said you couldn't do. Just do it. Lift your hands and give them plates. Lift your hands and give it praise. Lord, I just magnify your name tonight. I give you glory, Lord. Lord, I'm so hungry. I'm more hungry for you, Lord, than when I came to you at eight years of age. I'm hungrier tonight. I'm hungrier tonight. I'm so hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. Oh, Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. Most important thing tonight is what have you done with Jesus? Every person here tonight, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is your Lord and He's your Savior. The trumpet were to sound of the shofar in the next moment. You know you're ready to meet Him. You have assurance of your salvation. Could I just see your hand? Would you slip it up? Would you just slip it up? Appreciate it. You may take it down. While every head still bowed right now and every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you're here tonight and you say, Brother Darrell, for one reason or another, I wanted, I sure wanted to lift my hand. But for one reason or another, I wasn't able to. Would you remember me in this prayer? That's you tonight. Anybody here tonight, would you lift your hand up? Would you simply say, lift it up and say, remember me in this prayer, Brother Darrell. Hallelujah. I'm trusting everybody here knows Jesus. Next area. Everybody here. I mean, we had several baptized, I believe three in the Holy Ghost last night. If you're here and you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you speak in other tongues fluently, I mean, your prayer language is working real good. Could I see your hand? Would you just slip it up? Appreciate it. You may take it down. 
If you're here tonight and you say, Brother Darrell, for one, one, one reason or another, I, I wanted to lift my hand for that, for that, but I, I couldn't. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to receive dunamis power. I want to, I want to receive a language from heaven that the devil can never intercept, can never understand. A hotline just between you and God. If that's you, would you lift your hand? Yeah, just lift it up. Yeah, several hands. Anyone else? Is there anyone else that you've received, but you're maybe you're not as free as you'd like to be? Could I see your hand? Anybody here tonight? Amen. Glory to God. Second area. If you're here tonight and you say, Brother Daryl, I just feel like perhaps there's some hindrances, some impasses hindering me from breaking into Tehillah. And tonight, I just want the anointing of the Holy Ghost to remove it so I can just start off fresh in my praise walk. Is that anybody tonight? Could I see your hand? Yes, a number of hands. All right, those of you that lifted your hand, would you just quickly come up here? I just want to agree with you in prayer, just quickly, without hesitation. Oh, I give you praise. Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. His glory is here. His anointing is here. His anointing is here. His anointing is here. His anointing is here. I see that there's some things that have come at you. I don't know anything about you in the natural, but it's tried to hold you down in the spirit. And I see fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. I see three cords of the enemy, and I see the fire of God just severing them right now. Right now. Are you ready to receive what God has for you? Glory to God. His eyes. All right. He's had surgery on his eyes. He can see just your shape. Okay. But God is healing his eyes. Amen. Amen. He's healing his eyes. Yes. Yes. He needs a full manifestation in his eyes. Amen. And God has already started the process. Is that right? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out. In the name of Jesus. I come against blindness. And I have problems. I speak to the, the retinas. I speak to the corneas right now in the name of Jesus. And that which is behind, even the blood vessel behind the eye. And I speak to you and I say, flow freely. And you will not bleed eternally. I speak to you now. When I pass by thee, it's all they put in thy blood. I said to thee, when I was in thy blood, live. 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 I said to thee, when I was in thy blood, live. And I see that which the enemy is trying to hold you back. Being severed now. Now. Fire. 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 Oh, the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm going to put up a little bit of 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 a little bit of